All right, good morning, everybody. Um, I wanted to start out with how would I want you to answer something about a trend question? All right, how do I want you to answer a trend question? Because that is going to be on the test. And so I just wanted to like give an example for you. So here'd be my example. You might write this down. Um, so my example is what has a higher ionization energy, NA or P and Y? So there is my example question. What has a higher ionization energy, NA or P and Y? Step one is write the answer. So what is the answer? Which has a higher ionization energy, phosphorus or sodium? Phosphorus. Correct. You have earned one point. Step two, define the trend. So step two, I would want you to define the trend. So you would say ionization energy is what? The force it takes to remove the electron. The energy required to remove an electron. You've now earned two points. And then step three is why. So you're going to actually explain why phosphorus has a higher ionization energy than sodium. So why? There's more protons, but the same amount of shielding in phosphorus than there is in uh, sodium. NA and P are in the same period, right? So they have constant shielding. I like what you said there. So they have constant shielding. I'm good with that. Um, the core charge is doing what? Increasing. The core charge is increasing. Therefore, I don't know. Does that still mean therefore, the three triangles? Oh, what? Does that I mean three, therefore? I think that does. Okay, wait. I thought that was like it's, some predators, like the, the little Yeah, the little laser cannon. The core charge equal to the pipeline's Yeah. Essentially, yes. Um, or just number of protons okay. is also going up as you move across. Yeah. Therefore, or you can write therefore. I think that means therefore. Um, it is harder to remove an electron from phosphorus. So. A question like this would be worth four points. One for the answer, one for define the trend, one for something about shielding, and one for something about core charge. So I just wanted to show you how to answer a question like give you that. Give for saying that there are more protons instead of core charge. For more protons? Like if you're like, there are more protons in phosphorus, would they still give you the point even if you didn't write the core charge? They're probably gonna want you to say something about core charge or net nuclear pull. Okay. Yes, because just saying protons is not, yeah. more protons doesn't mean, because there's also more protons in cesium than rubidium, but that's going down a group. Yeah. So you have to really kind of define that. Okay. Um, I know, right? <laughs> okay, get out. Yes? Short answer. What's that? Do they have like short answer questions? Just FRQs. There's seven FRQs. Would that be an FRQ? Because that seems like pretty simple. Okay. Um, that would not be an FRQ. That would be like an eighth of an FRQ. Yeah. That could be like one part of it, yeah. where they'd be like, what has a high okay. ionization energy? Like there's some like, it's just like, write down the high, oh, we haven't even talked about hybridization. Like yeah. there's some where just like, write the electron configuration. That'd be one of the eight points on an F FRQ. Okay. So FRQs just have a lot of points, a lot of parts. Yeah. All right, packet from yesterday. Let's go over that. Here you go. <coughs> we did activity five and six, right? Okay. Tell me the questions in six, what is the good one? 
Oh, uh, you could have skipped those, sorry. Did you figure out just to skip them? Yeah. Okay, good. Mr. Okay. Good. We have to be locked in. Are we good with this? Yeah. What was your test in physics? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Here we go. How many electrons in valence shell? I said one, two, one. Inner shell electrons, zero, zero, two. Core charge, plus one, plus two, plus one. We good on these? I'll turn it on five. Does that make sense? Yeah. Down here, nuclear charge of BE, um, plus four. Okay, well, that's kind of silly because it's four. Inner shell is two. Valence is two. Four minus two is two. What's the relationship between valence electrons and the core charge? It is the same. Good? Yep. Flip it. Um, explain how the core charge of L, I, and B are consistent with this. I just said beryllium has a greater core charge. What did you guys say? Sure. That works. Flip it. Um, show the core charge for a neon, how that was calculated. I did 10 minus 2 is 8. Um, I'm sure your diagrams were good. What was the core charge for sodium? I had 9 plus. Down here, predict where the ionization energy for sodium would be, I said, greater than. What did you guys say? Yeah. Greater than. Um, then you made some weird drawings. What's the core charge of the sodium? I said plus one. And then on this one, predict where the ionization energy for this would be greater than, less than. I said less than. 4C. Good? Flip it. Down here, critical thinking questions. How many electrons does Na, NA have in shell one? I said two. Eight, one. How does core charge for Na compare to the core charge for lithium? Same. Yes? yes. yes. Okay. Moving on. Um, this one, I said it was larger. Yes. Mm -hmm. Consider the models of neon and sodium. Um, explain how the core charges of other, these are consistent. What'd you guys say? Yep. And then, did we do 12? Yeah. Why is the model of this in CRTQ6 not consistent with this? What'd you guys say for 12? Why is that not consistent? Because it makes the, because it makes the outer shell like nine electrons. Yeah, it doesn't. You can't have nine electrons in a shell, essentially. That's good. Flip it. <laughs> What's that? Is it possible to, like, by banding these electrons? No. Electrons are too small. Like, there's no way to really, like, catch an electron and force it. Um, eight, describe the relationship between core charge, the number of valence electrons, positions. I said same, same, same group. Um, relationship between valence shell and their positions. You guys know that. Um, based on a position period table, predict the valence shell core charge number of iridium. I said five. One electron plus one. Good? Okay. Moving on, um, down here, core charges atoms, I said seven plus, seven electrons, group 17. Between the valence shell and their position, well, fluorine is in the second, chlorine's in the third. And then what's the model? I said further distance is more shielding. Based on the position, what's the valence shell and the core charge for carbon? Second valence shell, core charge of four. C? Yes? Okay. Did you say we? Yes. Ah, we, we. How does the core charge on the neutral atom change as we move left to right? It increases. Um, here I said more charge, but the shell distance is not changing. For that's for our Columbo Columbic potential energy expression. One, how many valence electrons? You guys got that core charge, four, six, five, eight. And you had to do six, right? Did you have rubidium was less than bromine was less than krypton? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay. Questions on six. Okay. And then number one, true, true. Yes? Mm -hmm. Questions on true, true. No. How much energy does it take to get an electron with? Like, if it has the highest ionization energy? I don't know it off the top of my head. Is it insane enough? 
probably two, a decent amount. Two, two, two. two, two, two. Just I'm not sure. I don't have that memorized. All right, activity six. What's the relationship between valence shell and its position in the periodic table? Valence shell is the period, right? Yeah. Okay. Moving on. If you add protons, why does the core charge increase as you move from left to right? You're adding protons, but the same amount of shielding. What trend of radius is observed as you move left to right? It decreases. As you move down a group, it increases, right? Yes. Yep. How many electrons do ions in table two have? I said 18. Um, what's the basis for the trend ionic radii I've seen in table two? Same number of electrons, more protons. Predict whether the O2 ion will be greater than the F ion. Well, O2 is going to have 10 electrons. F is going to have 10 electrons, but F has more protons, right? Yeah. So which one's going to be larger? Uh, uh, oxygen. oxygen, because it has less protons pulling in the same amount of electrons. Good? Yeah. Okay. Flip it, exercises. Um, number two, A, I had false. Two yeah. B false, two C true, two D true, two E false. Questions on any of those true false? So false, false, true, true, false. Is there a question? B. B. The Na ion is expected to have a larger radius than the Ne atom. <coughs> so the Na plus ion, the Na plus ion means it lost one electron, right? So lost an electron, which means it has the same amount of electrons as neon. Agreed? Oh, we're more, protons. more protons. You got it. More protons. Why do electrons repel each other? Light charges, light charges repel. Flip it. Last page. Last page, check through these answers. Um, let me know if you have questions on any of these. Let me know if you have questions on any of these. Oh, my wife is going to the zoo right now. With my daughter, not just by herself on a random. Was it Tuesday? She, does she not have school? Well, my youngest daughter only has preschool Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Oh. So no, she does not. I think I did half day preschool. I didn't know. I think I did. I don't remember what I did. I think I did half day. Something like that. I went to Peppermint Preschool. What? Did any of you go to Peppermint Preschool? No. It was at one of the churches downtown. Does I don't think it exists anymore. It was the best preschool because I was there. Sure. I remember in preschool, they would like ring the bell when it was like done for like playtime. There was like an indoor playground thing, and I was always like go down the fireman ladder one more time after they ring the bell. Wait, I think I know what you're talking about. Is it across from like St. Mary's? It might be. Okay, I think I know what you're talking about. They have like this big like foam like block thing. I don't remember all of it. I just know that I would always do one more thing on the playground after they told us to stop. <laughs> so, I was very scandalous. Very scandalous. Um, problems down here. I had sodium for the largest second ionization energy, and then uh, magnesium's Y. Well, magnesium loses two electrons, sulfur gains two electrons. Cool? Okay, uh -huh. homework. Questions up to numbers 106. Can I go get my book? Sure. Questions up to number 106. You might not have any. Can we override and go to the AP questions? No. 52, 55, 62. 52, 55, 62. 52, 55, Okay. We ready. Here we go. All right. Um, this is blue. And we are starting with 52. Blue, 52, blue, 52. 52. Okay, on 52, I'm going to read this. Here you go. Wow. Hurtful. 52, you mostly just have to kind of figure out, like, what it's asking. It's kind of written odd. Um, let's get to this. We're going to do two chapters at once next. Uh, yeah, chapter 8 and 9.
chapter eight's just kind of not a lot in it. Um, bonding, which isn't what you think. Um, yeah. 52, one type of electromagnetic integration has a frequency of 107.1 megahertz. So type one is 107.1 megahertz. Another type has a wavelength of 2.12 times the negative 10th meters. So type two is 2.12 times 10 to the negative 10th meters. And then a third type, type three, am I on the screen? Has an energy, photons with an energy of 3.97 times 10 to the negative 19th joules per photon. The question is, identify each type of electromagnetic radiation and place them in order of increasing photon energy and increasing frequency. Well, the first thing you have to know is the answer number 52. You have to go back in the book and look at page number 253. Is that where they have like the electromagnetic spectrum? Yes. Page 253 has the electromagnetic spectrum. So type 2, it says 2.12 times 10 to the negative 10th meters. So Two point one two times ten eighty of tenth meters. We're in fifty two, right? Yeah. So that is gonna be what? Yeah, that's X rays. So the first type is X ray. Didn't have to do anything to it. Then I have to figure out what to do to these to get these to meters, essentially. So for type one, um, I know that lambda is equal to C over V. So lambda equals C is the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, divided by frequency, which is going to be 107.1 times 10 to the 6 hertz. Sorry. You guys know what it is. Because megahertz is not going to... I have megahertz. Megahertz is not going to convert to seconds. It has to be in hertz. I know that mega is 10 to the 6. Right? So I just changed that to 107.1 times 10 to the 6 hertz. So for this one, I got... 2.799 meters. That's a long wavelength. Yeah. Which is what? That looks like it's radio waves. Radio waves. So that is radio waves. So type 1 is radio. Type 3, I need to get this to meters. So on type 3, I'm going to use the combo equation I gave you in the notes which is equal to lambda equals HC over E. What they gave me on three was E. Thank you. So first two things are constants. H is Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds times 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by the number they gave me, 3.97 times 10 to the negative 19th joules per photon. Yep. You got it. So I solved that, and I got 5.00 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. What do you mean? Oh, that's the same. <coughs> no, it's not the same. 
what type of visible light more specifically. If you look on page 253, oh, green. it's green. So this is green. That's 52. Uh, can we do I think there was one before that. 55? Sure. So, 55. I've been doing better this week, not drinking so much pop. So you guys should be proud of me. I'm trying to kind of like, I'm trying to kind of like save some calories for all the Kem's givings and stuff I've got coming up. I can't wait. I cannot wait. The work function of an element. The work function of an element. Is energy required to remove an electron? Um, the work function for lithium is 279.7 kilojoules per mole. That is, it takes 279.7 kilojoules of energy to remove one mole of electrons from a mole of lithium atoms. What is the maximum wavelength of light that can remove an electron from an atom on the surface of lithium metal? So on this one, they're giving me kilojoules per mole. Um, so the first thing I would do is I would get that to joules <laughs> because kilojoules doesn't cancel out in any of the equations I have. So on 55, this is 55, right? I have 279.7 kilojoules per one mole. And I know that one mole of electrons has how many electrons? Right, it has 6.02, right? 6.02 times 10 to 23rd electrons. And I also know that there is, in one kilojoule, there is 1,000 joules. So that is gonna give me joules, essentially. That's gonna give me joules. So after you multiply through there, I got um, 4.65, 4.65 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Now I have my E, and I know that E is equal to HC over lambda. On 55, they're asking for wavelength. So we're going to rearrange that to lambda equals what we just used, HC over E. So lambda equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds over, or times 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, divided by this joules, 4.65 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So my backwards lambda, Jawe, is equal to 4.277, 4.277 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Sorry about that. 4.277 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, which is also the same as 427 nanometers. However you want to write that. That was 55. What's the next one? Uh, 63. We all are in agreement on 63. So 63, you just need to see how to do it. 63, you just need to see how to do it. It's actually super easy. So 63, I'll pause. I will do A, and then I'm going to let you guys do B and C, because it's actually really easy. It's, just, it's the funky equation. Funky equation. Uh, yeah. Jack, just my goodness. Like every other, sorry. What? Essentially, what yes. Jack, uh, 63. Yeah, you're being like so. 63. Here we go. Calculate the wavelength of light emitted when each of the following transitions occur. So this is saying what the electrons are doing. How are they jumping? Well, letter A, it's jumping from three to two. Okay? It's going from three to two. So for A, I know that the equation I gave you was triangle E is equal to negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18th joules, right? 
another constant, times 1 over nf squared minus 1 over ni squared. Sub in. So triangle E equals negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times my final was what for A? 2. What's 2 squared? 1 over 4. My initial was 3. What's 3 squared? 1 over 9. A? Yep. It says n equals 3. It went from n equals 3, initial, yeah, to n equals 2. It's oh, it's squared. It's oh, squared. Okay. I was like, what? The numbers already are changing. I know. And then you solve. So triangle E for A, I got... 3.025 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And then it's the same for, oh wait, I'm not done, because it asked for wavelength, didn't it? Uh-oh. So now I'm going to do that same equation. Yes, so wavelength equals HC over triangle E. I just figured out triangle E. So wavelength equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds times 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, speed of light, over 3.025 times 10 to the 19th joules. And the lambda I got for A on 63, I think was, I don't know, if, I think that is, that was my answer. Actually, I don't know. I'll just see what the book had. I don't know if I solved it. Well, let me get my final answer. Six point five seven times ten to the negative seventh meters. So six point five seven times ten to the negative seventh meters. It didn't ask for it in a certain. There you go. So that is red. Back from later, early in the book. So those aren't those really aren't bad. I had to know how to start it. You don't have to memorize the wavelengths, but you have to have the order of the electro and magnetic spe spectrum memorized. Was there questions on the AP classroom? Questions? Sorry, not on the AP classroom, on the multiple choice questions? Oh, yeah, those were most of the questions. Yeah. Okay. Was there any other questions on this? That was all of them. Can we do Up to. I didn't say we'd do 106 today. You said up to 106. Have people done 106? Isn't it 106 just basically saying, like, if it's unpaired, then it So 106, which of the following electron configurations correspond to an excited state? So A, 1s2, 2s2, 1s2, 2s2, and then it should be... See, I'm just... Isn't it Like, why is it... 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 So it, for one of them, it says 2p4, and then it has yeah. 3s1. Did it like jump shells? Or like, is that the excited state? Okay. So 106, what did you have? Which ones were excited? A, C, yeah, C, and D. Okay. Also, A. Let's skip 2p6, guys. No, fine. Oh. A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, you still just count your number of electrons. Two plus two plus one is five, right? So boron. So boron. And then B, one s two, two s two, two p six. That's not that's not excited. C, one s two, two s two, two p four, three s one. That's excited, right? So C would be excited state for what? Fluorine. And then D is also excited, right? Yeah. That's gonna be the excited state for what? Or iron. Iron. Yes. So basically, which electron configurations are messed up okay. is what it comes down to. Cool beans. Okay. Cool. Like AP classroom? Yeah.
AP multiple choice questions. What do those do? So weird. With, with the homework. <laughs> what was what? What did you have questions on? Oh. <laughs> They're not in the book. What's the first one? Four. Four? So four, what best explanation decrease in the first ionization energy moving from N to O? Also, two three. Two So for four, you have to look at N and O. So for number four, here is N. So N, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, right? So that's going to look like this. Up, up, up. Agreed? Yes. O is going to be 2p4, right? Which is going to be up, 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 one down. What answer is that going to support? For C. The electrons in N occupy all of them singularly, right? So there's one paired on O. So there's more electron repulsions on O. Therefore, it's a little bit higher. That's a tricky one. Number three, what's the best explanation for the decrease in the first ionization energy moving from beryllium to boron? So on this one, the electrons in beryllium, so beryllium, I end up with what? I'm ending at 2s2, right? <coughs> But for boron, I am going to 2p1. I'm ending at 2p1. So on this one, the electrons, it's going to be D. Yeah, the electrons in beryllium are located in the 2s subshell. Those can be closer to the nucleus than the, 2P, than the 2p. So 3 was D. What else? Uh, what was the answer for four? Five. Four was C. Five? Yeah. What's the most likely formula between the element XY where Y is a halogen? Well, the huge jump on five is between losing the second and third one, right? Yeah. So, so that means it's from group two. Right? Yeah. Well, five should be B. Really yeah, five is B. Nine. Do you want me just to post the answers or just? I can do that. But let's talk about nine. The reactivity of alkali metals increase going down the group. What is the correct explanation for this trend? What did you guys say? So A says the ionization energy decreases as you move down the group. Thus, it requires less energy to remove the valence electrons and results in a greater reactivity. Um, B, it says the greater nuclear charge to move down the group results in greater ability to attract electrons, thus making them more reactive. C, as you move down the group, the nucleus's stability decreases. I don't know what that's talking about. D, the greater mass as you move down the group causes mass. We know it's not C or D, right? C or D make no sense at all. So it's going to be between A and B. B is true, but it's saying that it's a greater ability to attract electrons. That's not necessarily true because what's B not accounting for? Shielding. So it has to be A. Yes. Correct. Yeah, you don't even, you're right. So B, it says it wants to attract electrons. They don't want to attract electrons. They want to give them away. 
Any other specific questions on a multiple choice? Uh, ten. Ten? Yeah. In which of the following electron transitions for a hydrogen atom is the greatest amount of energy emitted? Would you just have to write it? You would just have to do that N F minus N I. Yes. Um, 13, table below shows the first eight ionization energies for four random elements. Based on these data, which elements would most likely have similar chemical properties? So you're looking for similar huge jumps, right? What did you guys say? A is right. Because A, W, has a big... Like, well, out of all of them, they're the closest, but they're not even that close. So, y and Z. Y, the second one goes 5 to 1,400. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. Oh, wait, I was already wrong. I'm an idiot. I was already wrong. It's okay, Maggie. Oh, Self-care club. It's not. Oh, it's still going. Okay, um, 11. No, oh, 14. Same thing, never mind. 14. 14. So it's 13. 14? The expected electron configuration for copper should be force 2, 3D, 9. However, copper's electron configuration is 4S1, 3D, 10. Oh, so the S, the S orbital is wrong. So it's going to be... Which of the following would provide experimental evidence of copper's exception to the normal electron configuration? So what's the proof? So what's the proof? I don't know. That's what I'm asking about it. So how would you prove that? I think it's like... How would you prove that, that that was the electron configuration? I'm going to guess since I Yeah. Photoelectron spectroscopy is the practical way, right? Yeah. That is how you actually show these things. What about 15? What number? 15. 15? Identify the element whose photoelectron spectrum is shown below. Is it 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10. 4s2, and then that had to be only 2, 4p2. These look like different drops to me. So that's going to be... 4p2 is going to be what? GE? 15d? Yep. 15d. That one gets easy because it looks like they're like separate like graphs like next to each other. It's just showing like the energy levels. Yeah, it's splitting them. Any other questions? Okay. So.